So today I want to show you real quick how to set up your Akai Mini MK2 MIDI controller with FL Studio. The way I'm going to show you is not using the FPC method. Most of the people who you watch online, they're using the FPC. Um, they're using the FPC inside of FL Studio to do this. The way I'm going to show you is not using the FPC and it's going to assign pad 1 to channel 1, pad 2 to channel 2, pad 3 to channel three you got it so forth and so on all the way up to it to a maximum of 16 channels because you have two banks of eight inside of your controller so i'm going to show you that and that way for me that's a better workflow because i can play my drums without having to, to touch fl studio um you know i can do my kick drum my hi-hat my snare my clap however you want to lay and be able to tap out my drums without having to touch FL Studio when I'm doing my recording or doing loop recording. And then your keys will be able to play whatever virtual instrument you have highlighted in your channel selector. So I'll be able to play my instruments, my strings, whatever, my chords, and be able to play my drums without having to touch FL Studio. For me, that's the best workflow. It works way better than using the FPC method. I still have my MIDI data separate. For me, it's the best way. I'm gonna show you the template that I use. Um, how it's set up and why it works, how, how to set it up on the FL Studio side, and then you're going to be good to go. So check it out. I think it's going to be going to be good. Let's go. All right. So now we got the, the MK controller plugged into our computer. First thing you want to do is download the MPK mini editor tool if you haven't already. Um, and once you get that downloaded, the MPK, once you download the MPK mini editor, um, you're going to download the file in the description below that is called, that file is going to be called FL Studio Preset 1 in the description. Download that file, then you're going to open it up like I just did here. So once you download that file, you can go to File, Open. And it's going to open up a new instance of the editor, close the old one. Here I have this, and this is the key thing, the note number 48, note number 50, note 52, and 50, then 53 for these pads. That note number there is what is going to make it happen. I don't know why some of these numbers are skipping around, like it's not all in chronological order. I'm not sure why, but I wouldn't worry too much about it. I know that it works. I copied it from some other mappings that I have for another Akai controller, the MPK-49, and those mappings are what I have for this workflow there, and I just copied it. So once you do that, you're going to do a send and you're going to select the MK2 and you're going to send again and it's going to send it for program one if, or whatever program number you want to save yours as. I'm sending to RAM as well. So we'll do a send program one and then do a send to RAM and that should be good. This should automatically go to channel 16 because of the template that I'm going to include in the description. Um, once we're done that, you pretty much push that template. And again, the note numbers is kind of what does it and turning pad MIDI channel to 16 are the two big things. And that MIDI channel 16 is going to come back up here in just a second in FL Studio. So let's go over there. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is go to options, MIDI settings, go down to MK2. I have a couple controllers, so let me make sure I select the MK2 and the other key thing here is Omni Preview MIDI channel to 16. That's where that same 16 MIDI channel I just set up in the, in the MPK mini editor. And now I'm going to add some keys so you can kind of see how I can play an instrument and trigger my drums at the same time without ever having to touch FL Studio. So I have to, all I have to do is highlight the instrument that I want to play with the keys. <laughs> I can play them with the keys on the controller. And then if I want to play drums, I can play those with the pads and I don't, and I didn't have to touch FL Studio at all. So if I'm going to do a record, I can do all that without having to, to, to touch it. So if I do like a, Pad, let me just do a quick four bar and let me do one, two. I 
All right, bad example. It didn't do right, but that's the point of it. Um, and I think that's a better workflow than what most people will show you. It's going to be using FPC, and this way you can do it without FPC. And that's my workflow. My pads trigger whatever channel. Pad one triggers channel one. Pad two triggers channel two. Pad three triggers channel three, so forth and so on. And then my keyboard will play whatever sound I have highlighted. And you can do this for 808s and that type of thing too. So I have a lot more flexibility and it's a much better workflow with the controller than using FPC. I hope that was helpful, y'all. Leave comments, leave questions. Peace.